Hey everybody, Adam from Atlas Gunworks. Um, we're going to do three videos. We're going to do um, disassembly and reassembly of the top side of the gun, 19 2011 interchangeable. Then we're going to do a 2011 uh, disassembly and then a separate one reassembling from zero on a 2011. So STI DVCs, the gun, this is the gun we just got, we just got in and then tuned for a customer. This one came out pretty sweet. So first thing is just pull the slide back. If you've never done this, then you, you're probably getting in over your head if you're taking the whole thing apart. But pull the slide back. There's a little bump here. There's a rev on the inside of the slide stop. There's an equal bump there. So pop that out. Should just start to come out. And then that that little bump when it goes back in, I'll have to go buy that. But slide comes off. Top side of the gun we won't, or bottom side we won't deal with right now. <clears throat> Couple different guide rod setups. If you're running an STI gun with their um, Recoil Master, there's a little tool. I should have one here if I look hard enough. That's what the Recoil Master two-spring setup looks like. And then the tool is something like, the gun should come with it too. It's this little plastic tool. This thing that allows when this is all compressed, you stick it in there and it'll hold that spring while you let it come out of the gun. So that's that setup. If you're running a regular guide rod, you're going to push the guide rod forward like that. There'll be a little hole here. We just take paper clips and cut them and just stick a paper clip in there and then this whole piece will come out. This is a Dawson toolless guide rod, so no tool required. That would be the tool. And that and then the guide rod will come out the back. Then here, you under a lot of spring pressure, this is a 10 pound spring, so it's pretty light, but um, if you had a 13, 14, 15, 16 in there, a lot more pressure, so be careful. But take your pin out, or what are you going to do? There's your reverse plug, your spring, guide rod, we put shock buffs in most of the guns. So there's that part. Barrel, two different setups. One is a bull barrel. Bull barrel is simple, you just flip that little rod, or the link pin down that comes out the front. On a bushing barrel gun, there's going to be a bushing here. I don't have a bushing barrel gun on the bench. So you take a tool like this, a bushing wrench, and if you don't have one and it's tight, it's going to be difficult. And you would um, push down on the, the uh, you put a little pressure here on the recoil system, and you turn, and that will let your recoil system come out. And then once that comes out, you're able to get back in here and you turn the other way and there'll be a little lip on the bushing and then the bushing and barrel will come out together. So that's pretty simple. Um, the sights, um, you can put them in a vise and I'm not going to take the sights off this gun but um, you can put them in a vise and use an aluminum punch to drift them out. If you do that, um, take duct tape or something and try to coat the end of even your aluminum punch because you'll leave aluminum marks on the sights. The sights are pretty soft and the uh, depending on what your, this one's a hard chrome finish, but some of them are, are pretty easy to mar up. So always coat as much as you can there and then be gentle. The front sights have usually have Loctite underneath, so once you get them moving it's a lot easier, but the initial break sometimes takes a little bit. The rear sight, you're just going to take this screw out. Help if I have the right size screwdriver. The screw is threaded right into the slide. Oh, actually, this is the newer style. So STIs just come out with a new style, but the older style Bomars, which almost all the older guns have, this threads into the slide. And this STI, it doesn't. The slide isn't even tapped for it. Um, there's two little springs in here that will keep tension on the on the sight, so that when it's not, if you're not running it all the way compressed, it's not moving. Um, and then there's two Allen keys in this setup. You unbreak those Allen keys; they don't have to come all the way out. And then you can either use a tool or the same thing, drift them out with an aluminum punch or some really soft punch. If you use brass or aluminum and you don't have the tip covered, it will mar up and leave marks on the site for sure. So definitely better if you care. Some guys don't care. I won't take that all the way out just because it's probably in there relatively tight. 
Installation of this is the reverse. Drift it in, set your two screws, make sure it's zeroed or centered on your back of your slide. Two springs in. Springs in this one sit good. So in most of them though, they're gonna have it drilled and tapped. These new STI ones are nice. I they don't I don't know just yet how long they hold up. I haven't seen any break yet, but they're relatively new. So, then we're to the back of the gun. <clears throat> so there's a slide, they call this the slide stop. You're going to depress the firing pin with some kind of tool, pull the slide stop down a little bit, hold your thumb here because as you slide this down and away, this one holds in the extractor but two the firing pin which is under spring tension. So you pull that back, firing pin hits my finger, firing pin and spring come out. All that's left is the extractor. Um, if you don't, there's nifty tools. I think Harrison Design makes this one, where you can jump in here and try to push the extractor out, and that'll get it started often. I almost always just take a screwdriver and gently push the tip from the chamber side. So the tip's hanging out here, just push it in, get it started, and then from here you just want to be careful that when you pop this back that you're pushing somewhere where you, I mean, if you scratch the gun here it's covered up by the firing pin, nobody cares or run your thumb right here. Some of them are easier than others to take out. This one's relatively easy. We just had this one out to tune. Um, there you go, disassembled. Okay, so reassembly is pretty simple. A couple of tricks. When you go to put the extractor in, there's a, this little lip right here is the part that gets caught. So when you put the extractor in, you just gotta pull down a little bit and that'll go right in. And then the extractor usually goes past the point where you want it to, but it's going to float in there a little bit. So um, this is the tricky part. Take your slide stop. Actually, what I do is I put the firing pin back in the hole, and then I line up the slide stop so that it's just getting the corner of the extractor. It's holding it in there. The extractor needs to be nice and straight. And then once I get that, if you back the slide pin just a tad bit of tension off it, you can usually wiggle the firing pin by the slide stop and still have it hold the extractor. Now again, this part can fly because it's under spring tension, but just wiggle it a little bit, it'll go down there, and then slide your slide stop back, boom, it comes back, you're golden. That's pretty much the back side of the gun. Barrel goes in, whether it's a bull barrel or regular barrel goes in like this, if it's a regular barrel, for a bushing barrel, you take your bushing wrench, turn the, the barrel all the way the other way. That'll allow you to put your spring back in. On the spring, there's a couple things to check here. One is that uh, the smaller coils, where they're a little tighter on the bottom, are going to go in the base. And then, so that's there. Make sure there's no, you don't want this part, it doesn't move a terrible amount in there, but you don't want that scratching up the... So this has like a sh sharp little burr on it, so I'll take a file normally and just pull across that. And then same thing here, a lot of times these are cut and they've got a, so let's say we filed that one, which I'll do after. And then this one is going to ride on here too, and the same thing, like this one's sharp, but it's not really touching anything. But I'll probably just take a file and just dull that out a little bit. Any resistance there is going to cause problems. Um, take your reverse plug. Slide it down. It's all one unit now. If you had the pin, you'd have to put a pin in it. If you had a recoil master, you'd have the pin in there as well. Slide that by the barrel link up. Slide that by the barrel link all the way forward. Push it or pull your pin out all the way back. Pull your barrel link down. Gun slide back on the frame of the gun. And then this part, if you hold it right here, usually that lines right up. Don't forget to oil up your gun, which we didn't do. We'll do a separate video for that. And then I've got it just started in there, and then as I pull the slide back, it'll fall. And then this part's a little bit tricky, and what's tricky here is to not scratch your gun, and I do this a lot, and every now and then something bad happens. This spring, the plunger tube spring, often has different tensions. So if you get one that's super tight, a lot of times you really gotta fight this, and if this isn't lined up when it goes, and, it, and this one's super easy. Just saw it by it. So um, if it's a really hard one, 
I might even take some coils off of that plunger tube spring. As long as you've got, that spring does double duty. So it does the, it's the tension here on your thumb safety and it's the tension on your slide stop. And if you don't have enough tension there, you can see where it rests and then drill that out just a little bit, put a little divot there, and then that ball will give it more positive contact. Um, STI is actually doing a nice job right now of doing that teardrop one here on the thumb safety when it's down to let it come up and out nicely. And that's a nice positive click on that side. And then on this side, you, you don't want this to bounce around when you're shooting, so that, that it's got to hold it down, but other than that, you don't need it to have any more tension than that. So you definitely don't want it too hard to put together if you care about your finish because you end up scratching it. That's the top side of a 19 or a 2011. Hope that was helpful.